So the first step in creating our Oracle event processing Sour Suite EDN fraud detection application is to provide the application name followed by the project name which is part of OEP Suite and then we leave the default names for the Java packages and the runtime. Now we have a clear canvas onto which to paint our Oracle Event Processing Fraud Detection application. Firstly, we will use and drag onto the canvas our EDN inbound adapter, which allows us to automatically connect to the event delivery network from SOA Suite. We will give the name of adapter as the default configuration name. And now we will specify in the wizard the parameters that we need for this EDN connectivity. Here we are defining and accessing the EDL, the event definition language, which specifies the event types which will be used in this application and now we can specify the specific event type that will be used by this EDN inbound adapter. And finally, we're going to associate the schema uh, of these event types. The IDE will now create for us automatically the Java source artifacts needed to do the Java binding necessary to the EDN. And here we can see those artifacts automatically created. Next, we're going to define a channel, an input channel. We will give the name to this input channel as the EDN input channel. Remembering to provide capitalization when necessary. Once the channel has been defined, we can connect the adapter to the channel. And then on the properties for our input a channel, we can see the event types that are available for us to use. And we will select the required event type for this channel. Next, we need a processor which will analyze the event patterns for fraud detection as part of our application. We will call this the EDN processor. And within the processor node, which is our meta container for our CQL, our continuous query language, we will select here the queries that we need to identify these fraudulent patterns. And you can study these queries at your leisure. I will now include these SQL statements as part of this processor. A good practice is to always save your application during the construction process to make sure that everything has been built and saved correctly. Now we can connect the channel, the input channel to the processor and add a new channel, a new outbound output channel, which we'll call the EDN output channel. We will connect the processor to that outbound output channel. And again, for the output channel, we will see the list of event types and we will select the required event type for that channel. Finally, to communicate back to the EDN from this application, we will use an EDN outbound adapter. And in the same way with the inbound adapter, we would de uh, define, specify the parameters that you need to connect to the EDN. And in this situation, as we've already defined the schema for the event types, we will only point to the EDL file uh, that is needed for this application with the event type.
Once we finish, we will connect the, in, the outbound output adapter to the channel. And we have now completed our full detection application. And we will now rebuild the application to make sure all the elements are tied together nicely before we integrate with our SOA suite and our EDN in the runtime.